And I'm back. Final Fantasy. Today we're going to take a look at the uh, Pandemonium. First Wing, Asphodelus. We'll just leave it there. <clears throat> Crystal from beyond. He <laughs> he, appears my calculations were correct. I knew that at this very spot I would encounter none other than Emigos, the hero who saw us through the final days. So certain was I of my math that I stood here for. Well, let's not concern ourselves with that. I am Nemed Gigi. Nem Gigi. Assistant to one Professor Claudian. We work at the with the telescope to observe the ethereal scene and delve into its myriad mysteries. Some mysteries, though, are beyond some of our capabilities to unravel. The strange crystal we but recently discovered, for instance, defies our every conjecture. You've been to the center of the star, and you've been to the center of the star and far beyond it. However, so we hope that you may see something in this crystal that. We academics do not. I beg you, lend us your well-traveled eye at Aporia. Professor Claudian will be eagerly awaiting your arrival. Alright. Uh, Aporia. Greetings, Emikos, and welcome to my humble laboratory. I am sure Nimjiji was already told you plenty about us, but allow me to introduce myself personally. I am Claudian, leader of this little research collective. You must admit I've been nervous about this meeting ever since Nimjiji set out to find you. For a researcher in my field, there is no greater honor than to meet the first man in history to traverse the ethereal sea and return to tell the tale. The professor speaks often at length of your deeds, but he has no small number of achievements of his own name. He has peered deeper into the ethereal sea than any other in Charlian, and the breadth of the, his knowledge is peerless. Peerless, perhaps, but for a single man. We must seize this precious opportunity to learn what we can from him and perhaps crack this conundrum that has stumped the three of us from ooze. It was we who peered into the fathomless sea from the anti tower in the Dravanian hinterlands. There we spoke with Heidelin and learned of the fate of, that would befall the Tsar, the final days. Soon after, all research was moved to Labyrinthos, and through the telescope did we continue our vigil. As impressive a work as the vices, however, I can, glim can glimpse but a fraction of the sea's infinite depths. Which brings us to the matter at hand. Not long after the exodus was declared, we recovered an unusual crystal shard during routine observation. It appeared before us suddenly as if propelled to the surface by some unknown force. We found that it possessed an ethereal density that exceeds that of normal crystals by orders of magnitude, and its shape resembles nothing which occurs in the natural world. It was made not formed. Unfortunately, that was the extent of the information we, we could glean before we, for we were forced to turn our focus towards the exodus. The crystal was very nearly forgotten amidst the sudden upheaval. And thanks to the efforts of a certain someone, that crisis is now behind us, and we are free to resume our research. Thus did we decide to seek you out. A dauntless adventurer who delved into the unknown and beheld its innermost secrets. Now we would have you see for yourself.
Here is the crystal in question. It resembles all you have encountered before, even by the smallest degree. Please say so. Rebides within this crystal. As I thought, you do know what this is. Please tell me everything. Exposition. I see. The Asians use these to transfer their memories to new vessels. Fascinating indeed. It was plain that this crystal is somehow special somehow, but this revelation surpasses even my considerable expectations. Similar artifacts were, have appeared throughout the ages. Memories of martial techniques manifested in crystalline shards on the battlefield. Or storied stones passed from master to student. A comparison between said artifacts and this crystal may prove a fruitful first step in unveiling its true nature. What do you think, Professor? I see the memories. Windows to which you could gaze upon the Convocation of Forty. Like the crystal in Emigos' story, this one does not bear the mark of a Convocation. Then who could these memories belong to? And more importantly, why would, were they stored in this particular shard? More importantly still, why was it set to drift in the ethereal sea? <sighs> Professor! Professor! Claudian! Huh? Yes? I'm well aware that contemplation is the key to breakthrough, but there is proprietary, uh, propriety to consider. Yeah, I guess. And one you invited explicitly. Must we do this every time? Uh, what? Uh, yes, uh, of course. I guess terribly sorry. I do so easily find myself moored by the tides of rumination. Uh, perhaps a more uh, engaging use of our time with us would be for you to take up the crystal. If indeed, there are memories stored within. They may reveal themselves to you upon contact. If anyone... Message. Come. Pandemonium. Please. Faces. Grave threat. Star. In danger. That expression does not bode well. What did you see? Exposition. Pandemonium is not a word I've heard before. To my knowledge, the ancient tongue, if the ancient tongue serves me, it means all demons. Not a name that inspires optimism, all con things considered. The event that another star shattering cataclysm is in fact bearing down upon us, it would be the affirm. It would, I would have the aforementioned examples of crystallized memories to hand. Nimjiji. Resynod. That part? I don't know. <laughs> I trust the procurement to you. There are more memories to be extracted from the crystal. We will find them. As for you, Amigos, there is a person I would have you seek. 
the one who has delivered so dire a warning. Your story tells us that this crystal could very well have been made by one of the ancients. If that is the case, then discerning the nature of this pandemonium would require a trip far into the past to an era before the Sundering. We know of only one individual capable of such feat. Very hero who traversed time to prevent the world's doom. I must confess, the tales of people tell of your adventurers, their beggar belief, and their veracity have been a subject of much debate among my peers. After today's meeting, however, there can be no doubt in my mind that every in incredible exploit is in fact. So, I ask you now. Turn to the past, find out what and where pandemonium is, and we will we need to be concerned if we, and if we need to be concerned by this message. Thank you. For the time being, you should keep the crystal in your possession. I do not think you would have the la you have seen the last of its memories, and more may may be drawn out as you approach the source. Safe travels. And may we meet again soon to share your our findings. Off to the Crystarium. We just decide inadvertently. I suppose the reason we do this is because while we do have like make game mechanically, I can teleport to help us with uh, uh, a e via Ethernet. In reality, I would be coming to the Crystarium using the ocular to travel back and back to help us, and then I could use either a crystal there because time separation. So every time I go, if I did have additional needs to go to Alpus outside of uh, story content and like actually story wise, I would use the gate knock on the ocular. And so I went to and back in the story. So it would be the same type of thing. If received this message, A is already attuned to the past, so. Come, pandemonium, quickly. Oops. Ow. What happened? Well, I mean, help us. Oh! Could it be? No, of course not. Apologies, but for the briefest moment I thought you'd be a dear friend of mine. I realize now that such a notion is most prosperous. He 
You told me a falling star would appear before me, and I suppose you must be be it. Truth be told, I didn't did not expect the expression to be so literal. Hmm? Basically, I was dumped down into Elpis and crashed into Themis. Uh, apologies for not introducing myself properly. My name is Themis. As you can see by my bare face, I am not one of Elpis' observers. Rather, I have come here on, on an assignment which has been more or less routine up until this very moment. You certainly do know how to make an entrance. I must wonder what brought you here. For it is plain that you do not belong here. Or any place I know of, for that matter. I am uh, Asim's familiar. Th that's... That's... That's what I say here. <laughs> hmm. It appears my initial impression was not so preposterous after all. I did not know my friend had such a unique familiar at his disposal. As you are here at Asim's best, then I believe I can hazard a guess as to your purpose. You are here to investigate pandemonium, yes? If so, you are able to help you. We may be able to help one another. But first, might I trouble you to explain how you came to collide with my skull? Exposition. This plea. I see. I believe this dispels any major doubts I had concerning your intentions. Apologies for being so intrusive, but you must understand this is an uncommon occurrence. I shall not pry further, for I am well aware that we all have secrets we must keep. However, if I may, I would very much like to look at this crystal of yours. Fascinating. While well, I cannot say, say much as to what it contains, it is clear that there are memories stirred within. Memories that speak of something gravely amiss in pandemonium. The facility extends beneath Elpis and is overseen by the words of La Habrea. Its house it houses those creations that are highly valued as research subjects and highly dangerous to the star. Naturally, it is strictly guarded and under constant surveillance. Several days ago, however, an unnatural shift in, its, in the flow of its surrounding ether was detected. Soon thereafter, all communication from Pandemonium ceased. I'm here as a representative of an organization that works directly with the Convocation, and I've been tasked with investigating this incident. Now that there is some measure of transparency between us, might I offer suggestions to what you should do next?
In the course of your investigation, you may discover valuable artifacts. These can be exchanged for equipment by speaking with Meline in Eporia or Dijol in Ratsatan. Now then, my proposal is a simple one. Let's just need to pandemonium together. Our destination is the same, and I suspect the arrangement would work to our mutual benefit. Besides, I should have no trouble gaining us both access. I do hope you agree. I would be loath to to part ways from the fun, from the fallen star I've been waiting so long for. Originally, I had planned to conduct my investigation with the friend I had mentioned earlier. He also noticed the anomaly near pandemonium, so it only seemed natural that we should investigate it together. However, he eventually decided that it would be unwise for, for us both to go. If two members of our organization had been provoking, poking our heads around the restricted facilities, it would raise questions, you see. I decided to go alone, but he left me with these words. Fear not, for in my absence a star shall fall before you. While I could not comprehend its meaning at the time, I believe now I understand. He does have a way of being right about these things. Even so, his hints of what is to come has, were, are generally more cryptic. I suppose I should have kept my gaze to the heavens. Suffice it to say, I would be grateful of your presence either way. As for the matter at hand, we must first gain permission from the words of La Habrea before entering into Pandemonium. There ought to be a speaker waiting, waiting in Anag Anagnorius's. What a fascinating etheric signature. Um, in accordance with the Convocation's request, the two of you have been granted leave to observe pandemonium. I shall register your ether for the records. After this, From this point, you may freely go, come and go from pandemonium as you please. Now, that was a painless process. I take this as a sign that we were meant to conduct our investigations together. Of course, while you've been permitted entry into the facility, the specimens housed inside must be handled with the utmost care. You are to heed the warder's instructions at all times. Those who conduct their work within Pandemonium are called warders for their role with respect to the creatures within. Generally, creations that pose a threat to the safety of the star must be undone. However, the words of La Habrea have deemed cer certain such creations are worthy of further study, turning them in within the facility. Those who spend their days in pandemonium are not merely researchers. They must work tirelessly to ensure that none of their subjects slip their shackles. From all, for all intents and purposes, the place is a dungeon. Perhaps with such a comparison is arouses frightful imagery, but pandemonium is a frightful place. I know not the purpose of your investigation, but if you discover aught that, that merits the report, or pray do so with utmost haste. Master La Habrea shall guide us upon the proper course of action from there. Then I take it that means you have detected nothing amiss as of late? Orders have reported nothing that could cause alarm. The minor fluctuations in ether have been observed, but surely Master La Habrea would have acted if there is anything worthy worth worrying about. I see. It appears La Habrea is kept kept well abreast of the goings on here, then. I am um, I hope I am not overstepping my boundaries by asking, but you seem to be quite familiar with Master La Habrea. Do you know him? Uh, I'm going to go with the oldest stories I could tell you. I think... I don't think I've selected this option.
You don't know me as familiar, are you? Master Lahabre is not known for being generous with his time. That one would have stories for his company almost beggars belief. Regardless, while I doubt I need to tell you this, this he is of the convocation. Take care that your actions do not hinder his work. And with that, we are free to make our way to Pandemonium. The newest, the newest, yeah, newest? Is it? I think it's the newest that will take us there is in the eastern bank of Leith. Let us delay no further. Hey, remember when we were um, here in Elpis? We were in this area chasing after um, Meteon. And we talked about this newest that wasn't working. Or an old one. Yeah, it's the one we're going to. I had to contain my surprise for the sake of appearances, but it is true that you two have met La Habre in the flesh. I find you more fascinated by the moment. Still, I shall refrain from asking too many questions. Secrets will make make our journey all the more intriguing. We should we shall come to know each other in time, I wager. Or else, why would we fate have orchestrated our meeting? In any case, let us be off. Truth be told, this will be my first time beholding the fabled pandemonium with my own eyes. Here's to new adventure, eh? It is much as I feared. The speaker seems in such high spirits that for a moment I thought the ethereal regularity not nearly so grave a portent as I imagined. Last was a fleeting but vain hope. Gaze upon this complex network of chains and wards, the untrained eye might not sense anything awry. No effort has been spared in making this place impregnable. This place isn't ominous in the in the up at all. Even the finest in masterworks is not without its flaws, however. Someone or something is tampering with the protections. It is working from from within, eroding them from the inside out. Fear not, there is no immediate danger. I reinforced what protections I could the moment we arrived. This will not put an end to whatever is occurring, but it shall at least serve to slow its progress. One small victory, though. The road ahead of us is yet long. Yes, powerful forces are at work here. The silence in the air speaks volumes. While I did not expect a bustling facility, I see not a single warder. Our first course of action should be to seek one out, wherever they may be. However, there is something you must know. The magic I wove upon entering requires my constant awareness. That is to say, if you are forced to fight, I cannot risk joining you in battle. Should I lose focus, pandemonium protections will rapidly crumble before the force assailing them. Were there any other way, I would gladly choose it, but let us at least be grateful that neither of us is here alone, trapped in hopeless circumstances. If we should fail to find a peaceful 
Lucian, then I hope I can rely on your strength to see us through it. Um, honestly, yeah, this request doesn't come as a surprise, to be honest. At least you received it with good humor. Rest, rest assured, I do not mean to stand by idly while you risk life and limb. I hope to be able to lend at least a touch of magical support. Mm -hmm. Creation magics do have their uses in that regard. I had in mind to use your ether as a basis of illusionary allies that might fight at your side. Perhaps seven should, shall do. See, with me, that would make eight. Not exactly an army, but by the looks of you, and a formidable band nonetheless. It looks you, a formidable band nonetheless. There we go. Then, so shall it be. Now, what I wonder waits in Pandemonium's pit this halls. Oh, wait, this one. We have five minutes, let me see. No, I already did that. But it's an average wait time of like five minutes. Hang out a little bit, but. Oh, one thing I could do. While we're waiting, we'll interrupt, but we can uh, make a quick journey to Radzatan. So, I entitled today's episode Raids and Rolls, just for the fact that we're looking at the uh, Pandemonium Raid, as well as, hey, remember I did all those roll quests? There's a follow-up request quest to it. Well, if it's in an Emigos, all around good egg and champion of, well, the whole bloody world. I assume she said bloody. I suppose. Word well, travels fast, my friend. You've heard all of your exploits for defeating the blasphemies that plagued the good people of Eorzea and Doma. Sadly, there's a few other be other fell beasts that won't, yet won't for slain. And fear not, our efforts to bring them low proceed apace, and we had not but glad tidings from our allies. Reports from Garlemald, however, suggest another blasphemy threat lurks in the snows, and we received a petition for assistance. Strange, as you think, even the effects of the final days began to spread in earnest and encountered a great many monsters in Garlemald, but never a blasphemy. And to make matters worse, they say the Garleans who choose to remain and rebuild have been transforming in yet more hideous creatures. From what I understand, it was you and your comrades brought an end to the source of the final days, is that right? Even so, it appeared that its effects while, will linger a while longer. Until this malevolent influence uh, on Akasha uh, subsides, I dare say this uh, this won't be the last time we hear such tidings. As for the blasphemy, there's, we have reason to believe there is a great deal stronger than any that we face thus far. Your strength and experience will prove quite valuable, if you're willing to help, of course. Of course I help. Nah, I'm not going to try to pass that off. Why would anybody do that? There's there's the the ones which are kind of like more funny and kind of want to see the reaction of. Like the the one where it says, says I wasn't going to touch it, but you know you stole a, that, that one from the uh, previous quest. Truly, our contacts at Charlene will be thrilled to hear it, though they did not explicitly explicitly request your presence. It was clear from the first they were hoping for it. Though it may be frank, I 
I was not expecting Charlene, of all places, to be so concerned with the present state of Gondamont, with their strict policies on non-intervention. Perhaps we'll find out the reason before that this is all over. And that, But that's an inquiry for another time. I'll not keep you any longer. Once you arrive in Gondamont, I should think that the intelligence officer stationed there will be more than happy to appraise you of this situation. So we're going to Camp Broken Glass. Speak with the intelligence officer. Amigos? The Amigos? It's an honor to have you with us, sir. I presume you come to assist in our hunt for the blasphemy. Maxima and Lucia will be pleased to hear if you will come this way. It is good to see you, Amigos, though I wish it was under more fortuitous circumstances. We were far reluctant to call upon you, knowing that you had but recently returned from the far reaches of the heavens, but we are no less glad for your aid. Now then, I believe it's best if the man who first discovered this blasphemy explained the situation. Ah, I'm a ghost. Good. May I forego introductions then. Thank you for answering our call for assistance. As for the present situation at hand, it just, yeah, I'm not going to be doing voices because I can never remember some of them. As for the situation at hand, it concerns a joint effort between the Forum and the Lopreths to find new purpose for the moon. While there is no longer need for a vessel to evacuate the star, we believe the moon may yet prove of use to the people of Atheris. After such contemplation, a rather ingenious proposal was put forward to transform the moon into a repository of man's knowledge, an archive of hitherto unseen scale. Charlene has long had the honor of boasting incomparable repositories of world's knowledge, but it is, is far from perfect. Should calamity befall us, natural or otherwise, the wisdom of ages we have long labored to preserve would be lost. But the moon is beyond such any such risk. What's more is beyond the jurisdiction of any one nation. Thus, did we consult the allied nations of Eorzea, the Far East, and Razet Han. They agreed to assembling a survey team to make, take measure of the moon and its potential as a repository. Our plans for assessment were forestalled, stalled, however, by the presence of an entity we believe to be a blasphemy in the Tower of Babel. Claims of Galdian citizens transforming into monsters shortly after this, its discovery only gave further credence to the initial supposition. But we are not only ill tidings to share. Re reinforcements have been dispatched to aid us in quelling the blasphemy's threat. Lord Altoriel and a member of the Gridania Keepers of the en Entwined Serpents have already begun an investigation to the catalyst of these transformations. Though the skies no longer burn, the spread of this affliction is much curtailed and we must remain vigilant. Until the blasphemy threat has been quelled, Alphano and Alize have graciously offered to help keep calm the people of uh, Tertirium while we attend to the people here. But the matter of the blasphemy is not so easily resolved, I'm afraid. We re recently met with the certain complications that have hindered our plans. Yugri and Fordola have presently deliberated how best to resolve the situation. Perhaps it would be best if we heard the details directly from them. I should like to join you, if I may. As this endeavor is originally undertaken by on Charlene's behalf, I feel it's my responsibility to see this through to the conclusion.
Well, they're not going far, but hey. I did not expect to see you here, of all places. I am no less glad for your presence. I presume word of the blasphemy, blasphemy is what brought you here. In which case, I believe it is best, it may be best, if a member of the reconnaissance team, God, teams God, explain the situation. Yeah, it's Lorenz. An acquaintance of yours. Long time to see Lorenz. I'm not going to call him the, comp uh, the captain of the Company of Heroes. If I tell you, well, they sort of bug me if I know where you, you heard my name before. Um, I'm just lowly sold for hire, hoping to fatten my purse with a touch of mercenary work after taking my leave from Limsa. The job sounded simple enough, but, well, I'm sure you wouldn't be here if it, if it were, eh? Well, we didn't come all this way to hear about me, did we? Did he? A blasphemy we've, uh, we're after is making its nest in the upper reaches of the Tower of Babel. The auxiliary sector, I believe it was. It wasn't it wasn't alone. A sizable horde of beasts circling about like knights protecting the queen. Naturally, we thought to strike from a distance before engaging in earnest, but not a single bullet reached its mark. They were protected by some manner of mystical shroud, as far as I can figure. That a king eye for magic, I don't see anyone getting through. By the time we understood the futility of the situation, we'd been spotted. Retreat it was our only option. Pays me to say this, there won't, won't be any brute forcing our way through this brute forcing our way through this one. My understanding was that once transformed, these blasphemies were were completely devoid of ether. With what energies could it create such a barrier? That's the question, isn't it? My first, the first thought was some hitherto unknown uh, technique for countering shields. Never, needless to say, it's out of my depth when it comes to master's magic, which is precisely why I plan to see, speak with the other Cecilia when she arrives. If anyone can see, help us find a way to overcome the blasphemy's protections, it's her. And we're going to go into Asphodella, so we'll get back to this later. In the meantime, could you trouble you to help with the so-called manner of people changing the base? Blasphemy's horde is large enough when you first we found it. Can't afford to be more to join its ranks. And here we go. Into the first circle is Asphodelus. I'll save them. I must. It appears to be one of the waters we seek, and I'm afraid he is in no state to answer questions. Perhaps you could take care of this. It's a cutscene bef uh, before a raid, so. This is your basic first raid boss where it's not necessarily easy, but it's really not that hard.
Why did they turn the boss? I did that wrong. I know what I did wrong, too. Ah, I did that wrong.
Oh, I did that wrong too. There we go. I didn't do my full melee combo, but almost ended. I do how like how in these scenes they now animate uh, when you unsheath and sheath your weapons. Um, yeah, I'm just going to need it all around. It kind of doesn't matter nowadays. All right. I didn't get anything. That is okay. Got four more of these. Or three more of these. Well, knocked out of water. That was a thrilling display, and if I may be so vaunting, the warriors I spun from my ether fought even more splendidly than I anticipated. I suppose they are cut from an excellent cloth, after all. We should wait until this man regains his senses. He wears the robes of a warder, and I would be most very curious to know what drove him to attack us sight unseen. Emma goes, he stares. What? What came over me? It, it's coming back to me now. My mind was filled with a storm of desperation, anger. It leapt at you, though I knew not of your intentions. Pray, accept my apologies and for my thanks. Had you not knocked some sense it back into me, I may have fallen upon someone someone less capable of defending themselves. I am Icritonius, a warder of Asphodelus, Pandemonium's highest layer in the place we are now. One must wonder why you are so des wonder why you were so desperate to keep us out. What is happening in Pandemonium? The creations interred within Asphodelus have been set free and stock its halls to no end but violence. That is not good, to say the least. Has this ever happened before? Oh, no, never. Each level of pandemonium is under the charge of a keyboard, 
one who co keeps strict control over the most minute aspects of their domain. They're selected with great care, and their loyalty to Master Lahabre is absolute. Yet something has gone terribly wrong. Try as we might to hold the line, the chaos within is overwhelming. I hardly realized that I had been se become separated with my colleagues. I remember a chorus of whispers assailing my senses, and afterwards only flashes of rage and fury. Blackness. Which I awoke to find, to find that which, whatever has overcome me, was gone. I see, the senses may have been muddled by magics that affect the mind. Perhaps the self-same ones that saw you separated from the other waters. Whatever has taken hold of me, thank you for releasing me from its clutches. That you come here from the surface must mean some word of our plight has reached the outside world. If you know anything that may help, pray tell. Exposition. Horror among horrors. So Pandemonium's protections were indeed being dismantled from within. But the same individual or individuals that released his, his captives and set them upon you, no doubt. Such knowledge avails us little, however, if we cannot ascertain their identity. Themis, was it? Uh, you said you were working with an organization under the auspices of the Convocation. Would they, would they to receive word of what has transpired here, what measures would they take? Now let's say we consider this place to be a lost cause. Pandemonium ties to the outside world be severed, and perhaps it would be wiped from existence entirely. As I thought, for the creatures to escape into the outside world, there would be untold carnage. The words of La Bray would never risk that, despite what value the research subjects may hold. All the more reason to work with haste. If we can't ex expect further help, then it falls upon me to save the others, and not leave them behind. You would go alone? I won't leave the other warders to face certain doom. I know they fight for survival even now. They wouldn't abandon their duty. They would see the creatures return to their cells at all costs. And so I must do the same, Themis. I know the request I'm about to make to you is monumental, and please, say a word of this to Convocation until I've given a chance to set things right. Forgive my rudeness, uh, Equitanius. But my decision cannot be swayed by emotion. You would only be consigning yourself to the to an early death. Strength of resolve alone cannot win in the face of overwhelming odds. That being said, our investigation has only just begun, and we would be remiss to turn back ere we made an exhaustive survey. So, for the time being, there's slightly more than resolve to rely upon. I knew you'd be all too eager to join us. I've, each moment since you fell from the skies has been more interesting than the last. More and more you remind me of my dear friend. Which goes some way towards encouraging me that this matter will yet reach a satisfactory conclusion. So, you agree to help? For the moment, our goals align. Detective Magic's pandemonium yet hold, so for the moment, time is in our favor. Let us proceed upon the course you and Emigos have set, upon, set us upon. Emigos and Emigos, yes? Thank you. The warders owe you a great debt already. We shall be glad to have someone familiar with Pandemonium's halls by our, 
On the side, a party of three is ever so much more entertaining than a pair of two. Now, let us turn our attention to rescuing your colleagues. Perhaps it would be wise to approach the gates in case any have followed you out. I'm going to just call him Eric. Just because I don't think I pronounced his full name right. So I'm just going to call him Eric. Eric and Themis. Much easier to pronounce. Not a sound to be heard from within, which means neither creature nor warder has made it this far. We shall begin. For, we should begin forming a plan to save them at once. Forgive me if I misunderstand, but do you mean to rescue the waters and creations both? Naturally. Although they may be dangerous, they are valuable research subjects. I wouldn't see our labor wouldn't see our labor our untold hours of study go to waste. I dare say Larbury would smile to you say say such a thing. That is if we had cause to report this incident to him. Smile. I'm not sure his face is capable of such warmth. Hmm? Ah, so you have met him before. I'm under the impression he re rarely visited Pandemonium. As yes, my mentor was the previous head of this facility. That is to say, La Habre's predecessor is the po in the position of chief keyboard. Her name is, was Athena, and she was a researcher for, you know, with the words. Thus she, thus she who appointed me to this position, in fact. I see. I did not know there was a chief keyboard before La Habrea. The motivation to save your research su subjects is not entirely driven by duty to the words, then. You wish only to preserve the work of your mentor. If the right of it, I'm lacking the skills and how to go about that, however. As a mere warder and cannot yield internment magics. Ah, but of course I can hardly expect you to be versed in the magics we use here. If you call the in our battle earlier, I bound you in ethereal shackles. The internment is more refined and powerful magics uh, based upon the same principles. While both are used to keep our subjects docile, under the keyword of each tier is permitted to use internment. Only the Keyword of each year is permitted to use internment. Even if I were allowed, I'd lack the aptitude to use the spell in any notable, notable effect. Fascinating. What's some knowledge of these forms of spellcraft, actually? Labre himself established their foundation, if I recall. While shackles are meant to bind an object in place for a short time, internment freezes the very space around it for as long as the caster wills. Indeed. While the illusion it the illusionary beings who you summoned are in our fights just as much. I see your knowledge of magic is vast. Perhaps you already mastered the art of internment, and I've been lecturing you like a child all this time. I refrain my knowledge and there. I am not the precise understanding of how the invocation interacts with natural laws that would be needed to cast said spells with any consistency. While I consider myself well versed in various magics, it would be ill-advised to assume the duties of Keyword without instruction. That said, if I were to learn more of internment and its inner workings, perhaps... Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say leave the fighting to me. You two can figure out the rest. <laughs> hmm, I dare say we can do just that. Eric, again, let me just shorten his name. You, you implied that that what prevented you from performing internment was lack of magical capacity. What if I supplemented your power with my own? 
Did this spell succeed then? I, I can't say for certain. Never heard of such a thing being done. I believe it may be our best recourse. That is, of course, assuming you can perform the initial rites and incantations flawlessly. Even the smallest misstep and, and we would have to start over. You needn't worry about that. I've seen the spells cast so many times that their emotions have been burned into my memory. I won't disappoint. Very well. Let us work out the specifics afterwards. Once we do, we can test out our methods as, on one of the escaped creatures. Though I suppose there is a matter of finding one. It'd be foolish to rush in blindly unless we find ourselves surrounded with naught but an untested stratagem at our disposal. Nay, I would prefer to engage a single creature that Amagos could dispatch on his own if the spell were to go awry. I believe... I agree. I may have an idea in that regard. I recall seeing the hippocampus wandering the waterways during during my fight. Flight. Perhaps it's still there. Few of the subjects housed within Asphodelus are fond of water, and I believe that we'll be able to engage the beast without fear of unwanted guests. Then, that shall be your first target, and perhaps subject is a better term. Before we commence with the internment magics, the creature should be weakened to a sufficient degree. I believe I can trust you, can trust you with that task. Doing your thing. As dependable as ever, once you have you have given it a thorough trouncing, we shall bind this hippocampus with the keyboard's magic. Until then, my illusion shall fight by your side. The hippocampus will be alone, but it's a daunting opponent nonetheless. Its magic warps the environment around it and can be at home amidst the water ways. Do yourself for a fight. Asphodelus, the second circle. Less than five minutes, uh, but let's go check back on at Camp Broken Glass and see if we can pick up where that left off while we we're while we're waiting. Still gonna be some downtime, and I want to fill in. All right. We'll skip through. So we'll try to find where we picked up on the dialogue here. All right. Speed through this part. Now let's see what he what happens when I say, "Aren't you the the captain of the company of heroes?" Who me? Heaven's dough. Just a lowly sword for hire, hoping to fatten his purse. Blah 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 blah. It's basically the same thing. I reckon you'd sooner find Mr. Tre Treasure than the company of heroes, Captain, and neither have reason to make themselves known, lad. Anyways. Back to the sort of thing. Very well, we shall have a reconvene with Lord Tyrion and discuss that strategy. I actually probably skipped the dialogue option. Thing there. Uh, before you go, there's something else you should know about the tower. From the moment you set foot inside, I could swear that there was someone or something watching us. You shrugged it off thinking it was a figment of my imagination, but in hindsight, I'm not so sure. Nothing to worry yourselves about now, but best keep your guard when you do finally re return to the tower, eh? So we're basically in the point where we're basically meeting all the people that we met in the role quests. Um, not sure if we have exactly everyone from the role quests, but we have a good chunk of them. Uh, 
Ah, uh, Amigos, it is good to have you with us, my friend. Indeed, the road before us is not an easy one, and men and a man of my talents will prove invaluable in our, your talents will be prove invaluable in our efforts. We but recently returned from reconnaissance with it, wherein we made a few rather surprising discoveries. First and foremost, we were pleased to discover that no one residing within Camp Broken Glass or uh, Tetarium have turned, no doubt thanks to the concerted efforts of Maxima, Alphano, and Alize. However, we have reason to believe that those who did turn all hail from Locus Amenius, Minkovos, the Guardian's ancestral home, the very same. When the ill effects of the final days began to manifest there, a number of Guardian refugees from the region sought sanctuary in Garlemob. But the capital was already in ruins when they arrived. They were offered asylum, but many refused and instead chose to fend for themselves on the outskirts of the city. We are of a mind to go and speak with them directly if you are, care to join us. Perhaps uh, together we can learn what their recent uh, circumstances have triggered such terrible change among their people. Time being of essence, I believe it prudent we split into two groups and cover as much ground as we can as quickly as possible. If you and Ma Master Fortuno no, would uh, inquire with the people people have victor spoils the two of us we'll see what we can learn from luminal station five when you you're finished uh when you're finished pray meet us there or four on station four iv not not just me victor spoils us to the east of here yes let us be off Well, let's go into the second circle and then we'll be back and talk to Fortune and find out what's going on. This is what a normal player does. You fill in their time by doing other things while they wait for the key to pop. His head and body aren't quite attached. Still no other Hrothgar. I find this lack of Rose and, and Lala's disheartening. Too many people like slim things.
No. God damn it. I should just use Surecast on that. went the other way. I mean, so a little blue buff. Oh, we should have prop magic barrier thing. Oh, actually.
Nope, I'm good here. Here.
There we go. And check that out. I stole the LB3. They're all waiting for me, because everybody else has done this like a long time ago. I'm like rolling crap on this, I'm getting nothing. Alright Eric, what do you have to say? I knew that you were no mere mercenary, but to make such clean work of the hippocampus Susan fighters scarcely have occasion to visit Pandemonium, let alone display their skills. Mastery takes all forms indeed. What are we wiped? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Needless to say, our plan uh, worked to perfection no small part thanks to you two. Themis's power was more than enough to complete the internment. Spellcasting was never my strong suit, but that almost made me feel like a proper magos. Thanks. Most truly, uh, having seen your abilities firsthand in your fight with Emigos, I beg to disagree. Tackles is one ex exception, and tis only because I've been forced to practice it since I was but a small child. Other magics leaving me, f leaving me feeling completely out of my depth. Regardless, it seems the luck is on my side to guide you. you guide me to you. Uh, we may prove the impossible possible after all. Am I going to get at least one piece of those artifacts to, to, to get a piece of gear? Well, success is the only way the hippocampus is, is certainly heartening. In fact, we have yet to see any other worlders concerns me. The keyboard of Asphodelus is nothing if not cautious. Doubtless he has gathered what warders he could and retreated to a safe area. Let us hope so. It occurs to me that I, I know little of the keywords besides their magical prowess. There are more you can share. Of course, a man named Hesperos is in charge of Asphodelus. Not only does he have thorough knowledge of the creatures here, but he takes great pains to be a mentor to each of the warders under his charge. He has done much to ensure that I flourish here in spite of my ineptitude at magic. And I have always known him to be the sort of man who faces difficult decisions with unwavering composure. Furthermore, keywords are not only masters of internment, they also bend the hallways of pandemonium to their will with creation magics. With all this in mind, I am certain that so long as Hesperos guides them, the other waters are safe. I can see why absolute control over the environs is imperative. If you face the hippocampus upon arid sands instead of the waterways, I suspect the battle would have ended m much more quickly. I can in any case, this Hesperos is, a is as capable and caring as you say. You would do well to seek him out as soon as you can. He is like to not taking your colleagues to he is like as not taking your colleagues to a secure location. The safest place would be the innermost circle of Asphodelus. From there they could flee to abyssos of hard press. Yes, even should they have sought but safe haven within the other circles, if we make for the fort, we ought to encounter them on the way. Indeed, and we shall gain a com comprehensive understanding of the situation within Asphodelos, which will be essential in determining whether we ought to continue down to abyssos. The rub, of course, is that I myself possess no power to bend the circles to my will. Instead, we 
must proceed through the central corridor, which is barred by the Phoenix. And this last I checked. Phoenix. I've heard the name. Fiery bird with it, with life eternal. Beyond unquenchable brilliance, the perfected co concept boasts nine boundless restorative powers, if I recall. Truly an exemplary feat of creation magic. Perfection is ever built on the back of failure, however, and La Habrea suffered countless missteps during his experiments. And he he can hardly and he was hardly the only one. This Phoenix will be be but one of many attempts at the concept gone awry. Aye, far from evoking wonder, our phoenix is a creature of fury and wrath, and seeks only to turn the world to ash. Thus was it confined in pandemonium. Well, maybe the concept continued elsewhere, but as the moons turned, more and more researchers abandoned the project as an impossibility, save for La Habre and his words. When I recently received word that at long last La Habre had succeeded where so many others have failed, I was nearly overcome. Pray tell, how did the Waters of Pandemonium celebrate this ma their master's achievements? I don't believe we did. The research of the words of La Habrea was little consequence to our work here, save for their spare times it char charges us with a new specimen. Truth be told, I don't remember anyone taking note of this the occasion. But enough reminiscing. We must make ready to confront the Phoenix. While it's possible that it flew off in some other wing of pandemonium, we would we would make that assumption in our own peril. Better to assume we'll need to bring Asphodelus most unfruitly subject to heal. Certainly see no reason to delay. The Phoenix power over flame will avail fill it far less in a barren court or barren than elsewhere, so it may will serve us to sub Subdue it sooner rather than later. Yes, I can battle the Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix. What? It seems whoever is behind this can alter the space around us as well. We face an uphill battle. Hmm. Possible. If those are creation magics at work, then that means... Let us confront that reality after we have conquered the enemy in front of us. Every drop of our focus must be required if we are to enter the Phoenix. Basically, one thing at a time. <laughs> Oh, this is 10 minutes. Wow. Oh. 
Back to Forcer Devil. But the roll quest, this roll quest line is longer than the uh, Asphodelus quest line. Oh, okay, and there we go. Never mind. Estimated 10 minutes ended up being less than a minute. Or maybe it was like a minute and some seconds. I don't know. Some, something like that. refresh my beverage after this yeah you thought everything was going to be black and dark right I'm thoroughly disappointed in the, the compadres that Emigos is is uh, calling. What would be really neat is if they were just all looked like Emigos. Gotta remember this one. Ah, crap. Keep forgetting about that. I, I need to do these more options than I'll actually learn. Need more practice, basically.
Oh, yeah. No one's using... Let's see if somebody else uses it now that they they see me in the... There we go. That's a melee one. That's better. One and done. Good job.
Ooh, I got something. Although I can't really turn anything in right now because... But the Phoenix is shackled once more. However, there is yet the matter of this arena. As we are told, there is but one person in Aphidelis with the ability to ability and authority to wield such magics. Though fortunately it appears he has saved us the trouble of finding him. A contemptible display. Benefit an inferior specimen. Even so, I expected it would be at least it would at least delay your advance. Imagine my surprise when I saw the chains of a term and drag the phoenix back to its cage. Either the bird is even more of a failure than its creators care to admit, or are no mere trespassers. I had hoped our suspicions were misplaced, but alas. Ward Hesperus, why? Why have you brought such chaos to our beloved pandemonium? Pandemonium, pitiless, it's impenetrable and utterly steadfast, unlike those charged with its keeping. What has possessed you? I don't understand. Oh, Eric, must you pester me with these inane questions? Uh, think for yourself. Surely you can muster a theory or two for that dim wit of yours. Then again, you have never been one for insight. My master Lahabreus suffers at your men mediocrity. I shall never understand. You, you may look like him, but you are not the Hesperos I know. Something has warped you too from the inside out. The keyboard I knew was, had passion for all those under his charge, be they clad in robes or shackled in chains. Was that all a farce? Did you hide your contempt for, for us all those years? Those who are content to merely glimpse the water's surface are doomed to be dragged into her steps. You prove my opinion of you with every word. Uh, my mind is clearer than it's ever been. Even now, seeing you feebly grasp for answers makes the bile rise in my throat. Such wasted potential to be son to Lahabrea, yet no more skilled with magic than a newborn babe. And of course, it's always about Lahabrea. Silence! You are not worthy to utter his name. For once, be grateful to witness a feat beyond your meager capabilities, beyond your shallow reckoning. I have spilt the surly bounds of mortality. I have, have become one with our mis become one with our mystic creations and rid myself of imperfections. I stand upon the threshold of godhood. As a Hemetheus shall I serve Master Lahabrea, ever faithful, at the end of my days. End of days. And he shall require no other. I think not. Are you so blinded by arrogance that you have lost sight of what it means to serve? Eric is more capable than you could ever know. It was thanks to his instruction I was able to master the art of internment. Both how to wield it, 
how to break free of it. Amigos, let us quit this place. Whatever poison has corrupted Hesperos' mind is staying in its power of far eclipses our own. Must have time to gather our strength. <laughs> Weaklings. So they may be, it seems this singular aptitude to master internment so quickly. I say nothing of how swiftly that familiar lay low the phoenix. Regardless, their noble aims will be their undoing. Where they fritter away, their strength is calming the beasts of Asphodelos. I continue my work. Even should they survive long enough to reach the heart of my domain, not shall await them but doom. I eagerly await your arrival, Eric. Even dullards have their uses. My darkest suspicions have been realized. We face the keyboard of Vasfidelis himself. More than that revelation, however, Eric worries me. He loved Hesperos for his compassion, but received naught but scorn from whatever the keyboard has become. He has said little since our return, and we hope that the shock of recent events does not prove to be a death knell for his resolve. Okay, we're going to take a uh, brief pause. I'm going to refresh my beverage, run to the restroom, be right back in just a couple minutes. All right, time to do the last circle. Let Mr. Rudolph for what comfort he can to Eric. 
What turns the load to disturb Eric so soon after what has occurred? I'm afraid circumstances do not afford us the luxury of time. Perhaps it will do him well to speak with about recent events concerning both the keyboard and his father. The creation of the world was which surrounds pandemonium was an astonishing feat of magical prowess, feat accomplished by none other than La Habrea. That both my father and I can bind others in chains is perhaps the only thing that we have in common. Ah, so it is true. I am La Habrea's son. Bereft of his talent for magics, or his brilliant mind, but his son nonetheless. Really, this doesn't come entirely as a surprise to you. I had an inkling when you said you had practiced ethereal shackles since childhood. Assuming you had been employed here, here quite that long, I had to indicate some long-held connection with La Habrea. It was La Habrea that taught me how to cast ethereal shackles. That was it. And further education was overseen by the words of La Habrea, more specifically my mother, who was a researcher there. You did speak of Athena. Chief keyboard, uh, keyboard before La Habrea. She's your mother, yes? Oh, astute. I can see now why you have chosen to lead this investigation. You're the right of it. Athena was my mother, and it was she who invited me, me to join her here. La Habrea had nothing to do with it. I see there's little little love lost between you two. Whatever I what I cannot see is why La Habrea was appointed chief keyword when another was already in place. Was in place. My mother is no longer with us. Vahabre is all too eager to assume her responsibilities, but there he a moment spared to mourn her. What love do I owe him now when he offered not one drop of compassion then? I see. She is no longer with us. An expression to convey the end of a life. I had known only the public face of Labria. While he is lauded by his abilities to maintain composure in the face of unnerving circumstances, I must admit that off he comes across as cold. Apologies, but can we speak of something else? This topic isn't an easy one for me to discuss. Of course, there's more pressing matters at hand after all, namely how to deal with Hesperos. We have yet to see the other borders. Judging from what we, we know, we can surmise that Hesperos has confined them somewhere beyond our grasp. And now that he is aware of our presence, he will be prepared for our next encounter. We cannot expect to face him on equal footing. Quite the opposite, in fact. Every moment we spend chasing after the creations is another moment Hesperos can contrive another advantage for himself. The wisest course would be to find him first and foremost. He said that he has become one with these creatures. Perhaps that means he is vulnerable to internment. In theory, that would be possible. However, it is enough, enough merely to find him after all that he's done. I need to know why. I need to know what drove him to forsake everything he's worked for. Was it all truly so he could serve his master? To my mind, he has merely put La Habrea's own work at risk and trade for some nebulous power. La Habrea is the chief keyboard of Pandemonium. How would throwing it into a disarray win his favor? Doesn't make any sense. I share your curiosity, but we must consider what, that our enemy has us at a disadvantage in every sense. What do you think? Do we seek to put him in fetters, or should it be, would it be too dangerous to allow him quarter? 
They can find him, I can always strike him down. Daring as ever, I see. I know not what trials you have faced in your past, but I see you are, are so certain in all the con and see you so certain in all the convincing I need. Very well. Let us try Eric's plan. Thank you, Amigos. I believe I can shed some light on the nature of the foe. When Hesper spoke to us, I noticed he bore the telltale fangs of the Virkolikos, a beast which feeds on the ether of its prey. Likely it is the creation Hesperus merged his essence with. And we know all too well that he can change the environment around him at will. The battle will not be an easy one, but I believed in our victory. See how quickly this is. I'm just going to stand here for a minute. Let me talk to Eric and Themis. That Hesperus possessed such a lust for power that he would resort to this. Clearly I misjudged him. I'd like nothing more than to strike him down myself, but seeing you wipe that arrogant grin off his face would taste just as sweet. He called himself a Hemitheos and claimed immortality. I know not how he discovered this dark art, but his actions do not speak sound mind. Big metal spiky cages swinging from chains attached to nothing? There it is. I knew it was going to be quick. And serpent guards, which look like one of the guards from uh, Catesis Hyperborea. Hyperborea. I can't remember this fight too much. <laughs> oh, the crowd! I'm like, eh, whatever. I'm doing this for the story. And hopefully some gear. Hey, a Hrothgar. Mithius Esperos.
Bloop.
I made it through most of it. I can finish this story. Now, Themis, we end this here. Fools, I will not put be put in chains. To think that I would fall before one of such as you. Perhaps I should have treated you as m more than a mere nuisance. Despite your victory, you should never have the knowledge you seek. The secrets of my transformation, the secrets of my deception, shall return to the star with me. You have wasted your best, Hesperos. We have, we have the upper hand now. Surely you can see that. Yes, yes, your repertoire is not exhausted yet. My repertoire is not exhausted yet, however. Though I have failed, my end shall be on my terms. I will remain loyal to my last. Come that I... That what may I die with... Dignity. Nor did your ambition lead you so astray, Esperos. We're better than that. Your star shone more brightly than any other in Pandemonium. You had law braves restrict his trust. What more did you seek? That you would forsake all that and sully legacy besides. He became so blinded by his own desires that he lost sight of his duty. In the end, he lost everything and his plans lay in tatters. I fail to see any dignity in that. Even so, I would like to know why he chose this path. Hesperus' infatuation with your father is, was his undoing. Perhaps he was jealous that fate had chosen you and not him to be Lahabre's son. So terrible did his jealousy become that he sought verboten power, power that Lahabre would be, be unable to ignore. How does a pursuit of respect warp one's heart so? How does infatuation with one person turn into contempt for someone, everyone else? I've never heard of such a thing. Uh, you know, what? I don't think I've picked those. It's not as uncommon as you might think. Trust me, we run into a few of those. Happens. It doesn't make it right. See, I mean, I can't, cannot but find it vexing, but perhaps that signifies not but my own capacity for bitterness. I do understand that it, 
what it is to be to have a beacon to follow in dark times, a person you can trust to guide you true, how it is desperate how it is to desperately wish their light would fall upon you again. But we have spent enough time assuming the intentions of the departed. There is there are the living to consider. We must find the other waters and round up the remaining cre creations forthwith. Of that, at least, we can be certain. I believe I can be of help in that matter. The influence of Pesper's magic is fading throughout Asphodelos. Now is, now is the perfect opportunity to seize control of the facilities and restore things to their original state. Seize control? Can you really do that? What? What is this presence? Eric, what lies beyond that threshold? That's the passage that connects Asphodelus to Abyssus. Aye. Be on your guard, you two. Now that Asphodelus is free of obstructions, I can more easily sense disturbances in the lower levels. Something stirs in Abyssus. A warning sigil? How? There's a turn to the gates for now. I should like to appraise the situation from there. Needless to say, our investigations are far from over. Although we have defeated Hesperus, it appears that we have but scratched the surface of Pandemonium's troubles. My head is still swimming with questions. Could this mean that Hesperus hasn't wasn't actually behind this? It is a stock possibility, yes. The root of the crisis may lie somewhere much deeper than even Abyssos. When we first encountered you, you said the memories of your escape were vague and that your senses were muddled. I believe this is more than the result of a panicked mind. You were made so to feel this way by a powerful magical influence. It is possible that the same magic could have poisoned Hesperus' heart, twisting its affection for La Habre into a burning obsession. Then, in his altered state, he was made an offer of power he could not refuse. Wait. Are you suggesting that someone else turned Hesperos into that thing? If so, it stands to reason that they won't stop at him. Indeed, a mysterious mastermind does not lack for subjects for his experiments. It's a more potential hemitheo Oi. What you're saying is true, that my colleagues, they're doomed to share the same fate as Hesperos. Do not lose heart, Eric. The Hesperos challenged us alone, and that tells me that the process of his creation was a long and taxing one. If he was the first Hemetheus, then the rest of the warders are likely still alive. However, much as I would like to hasten deeper into Pandemonium, the way forward is sealed off. We must focus our efforts on finding a way through. The creation still having free reign in Asphodelos, that won't be easy. On the contrary, I yet retain control of these circles, and thus can wield and tournament magic with their, within their halls at will. The creatures will pose no threat to us. Just like that, 
then nothing is stopping us from returning order to Asphodelos. Just so, I shall require your expertise to keep the peace after the subjects have, have been returned to their confinement. However, you are Asphodelos' sole remaining warder, after all. Truth be told, I did not expect this investigation to become so involved. Of course, I would like to resolve matters here without resorting to outside help. But... Do you mean to send a report to La Habrea? It is too soon to say. Let us first find a way into Abyssos. It would be best to uphold our, withhold our judgment until we have ascertained the whereabouts of the other warders and the identity of the party responsible for their disappearance. Agreed. Even so, it means saving. If if it means saving even a single life within pandemonium, then we're not above asking La Habrea for help. Should it come to that? Recent discoveries certainly point Hesperus' action in new light. The number of unknown elements in this investigation grows, and we must proceed forward with the utmost caution. To that end, Eric and I shall remain here for the time being. Much as I enjoy your company, I do not believe we shall be needing protection so long as we remain in Asphodelos. You should take this time to rest. Surely you are weary. There may be more battles ahead of us. That is his burden may grow heavier in your absence, but he'll sh he's shown that he's more than capable to bear it. Still, I would ha would help what's I would help wheresoever I'm able. All we've achieved so far has been thanks to you two, and I mean to repay the debt I owe. I don't know what use I can be outside of pl placating the creatures, but I'll find a way. Nonsense. You owe us nothing. It is thanks to your knowledge of the magics which govern this place that we were able to come this far. Elsewise, we would likely succumb to the hippocampus assault. Each of us has arised with this at this dire pass by a separate pass, but it is only by combining our respective expertise that we will reach the end of it and see pandemonium saved. Thank you. Themis, Hesperus, thank you, Themis. Hesperus' words seem to have affected me more than I realized. Together we will come as far, and together we will reach the end. I have no doubt you will. Even so, let us allow Amagos' rest. Besides, you have someone waiting to report on your progress, yes? I dare say your story will be much, much more than I, uh, will be much more than they ever imagined. He knows. All right, back to Aporia. Welcome, Elma Ghost. Back from the post past, none the worse for wear, I see. So, what did you find? Exposition. So, the evil foot in pandemonium. An already ominous place, I must say. Mystic beasts and missing borders. Truly, you are fortunate to see you return to us in one piece. It appears the vo voice that Meadows heard from the crystal spoke the truth. As for who left it behind and why, those are yet questions to be answered. Indeed, it would be someone who lived among the matrons, or it would be someone trying to avert tragedy from the future. Much remains shrouded in mystery. Yet, ilm by ilm, we shall unveil that ministry, with the help of Emigos, of course. By his actions, has the fabric of the past reshaped, yet he returns to the same present he left. Which can only mean one thing, that his intervention in Pandemonium's crisis is but one of the countless building blocks of history upon 
which our present has been built. There is no telling what consequences would arise if we stopped pursuing the, this matter now. Whatever plot is unraveling within Pandemonium, we must not let it reach its conclusion. If one of those creatures should escape, what ripples could carry forth through the future? Might wreak havoc upon the world of the ancients, and their despair would leave an undemnable mark upon history's pages. Their despair would only feed the terrible beasts that aroused during the final days. The first final days already had a dramatic effect on the eons that followed. The scars it left was ma made even deeper than we risked losing our present entirely. Whatever the cost, our connection with the fut future of Elpis must be preserved. I know I've asked much of you already, but can I count on you to continue your work in Pandemonium? The tireless efforts are much appreciated. If there's aught you can do to ease your burden, you only need say the word. Speaking of which, might you return the crystal into our keeping? While we cannot accompany you to the past, perhaps something can be gained by researching it further. Ah, it shines just as splendidly as the day we met. We shall begin work right away, but I cannot promise any meaningful results for some time. And as matters in Elpis seem to be in a similar state, I must ask that you rest. But before that, allow me to make an introduction. If our research moves into a critical stage, I found it only suitable to recruit another assistant. Melene is an expert in ominence from throughout history, be they from the far flung past or made in the most modern forges. Should you find aught to interest in your adventures, bring it here and she will be glad to offer you services. We know researchers in numerous fields that would love to get their hands on artifacts from bygone eras and would give you goods in return that would should aid you in trials ahead. Basically, this is one of the places you can exchange stuff. For the moment, if you ever wish to pursue the records of events you have reported, MGG has been taking faithful and thorough notes. Uh, she is at your complete disposal. I said, that we have embarked upon something monumental, something that will dwarf all else I've accomplished in, in my many, many years of research. I can think of no greater honor, no reassurance than to have your capable assistance in this endeavor. If there is anything to be found that will contribute to your success, we shall find it. We shall not rest until we have unlocked the mysteries of the crystal, and you will be the first to know when we do. I don't think I could exchange, have anything to exchange. Yeah. I've got like some of one. Yeah. Some chances. I have a couple of artifacts. Oh, I got enough Saratu too as well. I got a blade and thing, but a helm, a blade, a chassis, and armor. So, but nothing that I can really use. The GG here will just give me access uh, to Savage Mode, so I'm just gonna uh, skip through this. Here we are. All right. Now we can finish the roll quest. Uh. I was less than that. Never mind. Oh, uh, because there's an Elpis. This time I will not be stopped by cues. Hey, 
And if anything, while we were waiting, we got a little advancement in this part. That they should choose to reside here in the cold, I can but presume they will not be amenable to conversation. Even so, must not be deterred. Come. Talk? What is there to talk about? No home, no future, nothing. Doom spells the end of us all. Mm, come to hear our grievances, have you? Mm, more than you have, have time to hear them, I'm sure. We have lost not one, but two homes, our loved ones, our livelihood. There's nothing left. I served my time with the military, I. For what? Lose all my friends? My son? There was not to show for it but our claim of Lucas and Minius. So, well, so we thought, calamity would visit us upon us for reasons we know not, and when they thought to flee, it followed on our heels to Garlemald, ruin and ash at every turn. Can't imagine why you or anyone would, would, would feign interest in our troubles, but if you insist... We find a great many of the people here are in the military at one time or another. Some retiring with honors, others without. Sadly, I'm one of the latter. Born one too many scars in battle, and so my contributions were enough to warrant leave to move to Locus Minios. It was a land of warmth and bounty. The Crevasi Rebellion admittedly proved troublesome for a time. But it didn't take long for the Second Legion to quell their uprising, practically drown in the calm and quiet. And then one day the skies came alive with flame. We were overrun by all manner of foul beasts born of our brothers and sisters. Second Legion barely had time to assemble their forces before they were overrun and snuffed out. We barely escaped with our lives. But we were greeted only with more rack and ruin at our arrival here, and we're We've not the strength to take our home back from the Corvassi a second time. There's nothing left for us anywhere. Did you learn from how they came to, to be in such dire straits? I see. Very much the same. Military forces of Locus. Minius, Menace, as a, were, yeah, Menace, were defeated in the wake of the final days, desperate to survive. They naturally fled to Garlemald, seeking sanctuary. It was their hope the might of the Empire would allow them to reclaim the home they had forced to abandon, but the capital was already in ruin when they arrived. Needless to say, the lands that they have long be believed to be the ancestral home of the Garlean people may remain forever lost to them. Those unfamiliar with history would believe they, were, they have always resided in the bitter cl cold climes of the northern hills bar, but that was only after the Corvassi invaded uh, 800 years prior. With the advent of uh, Magitech, I imagine it was all too easy for Emperor Solus to rally his people and take back what they believed to be rightfully theirs. Yet history would tell us true that the land they call Locus Minus has been known by other names and served as home to myriad peoples. Indeed, one need only look back to the Allegan's reign in the Third Astral Era to see, give the lie to Garlean claims of sovereignty. Yet even had they uh, su such ancestral ties to Locus Minus, this antecedents cannot justify their animosity to foreign peoples. 
animosity poorly veiled by delusions of justice, as has been the case for so many nations throughout history. Would that man have the sense and strength of will to break free of such chains of hatred? Help! Someone help! They they turned! Another monster. Quickly, Amigos. We have a moment to lose. One of my mates seemed unwell, so I thought to come over and look in on him. Next thing I knew, he... No one appears to be injured. Did he not attack? He just walked off in the direction of the tower, and it dazed as if it was calling to him. He could not have gone far. If you would go after him, I would remain here and see that all was accounted for. My check bow out. Lisa slain then, thank the heavens. For a blessing, no others have turned, and a measure of calm has been restored, if only for a moment. Witnesses uh, were able to offer a clue as to the source of the transformation. They claimed the affliction was listening to this radio. Even now, it continues to play the same cryptic message. Empire, no more, never again, rise, ashes. They're distorted by radio static. You can hear a voice saying the Emperor is no more. Never again shall it rise from the ashes. But how is this possible? There's no facilities left standing that could possibly deliver a broadcast. Last time this happened, the signal came from the Tower of Babel. Be that as may, Anima is no more, and the Tower of Babel has fallen into disrepair, by your hand no less. Which begs the question, who, or perhaps what, could be behind this? Amigos, Master Foshino. No, a moment if you would. Shortly after we finished our inquiry at Liminal Station... Station 4, Lord Emmerich and Admiral Mirrorwib arrived and requested an audience. Apologies for our late arrival. Knowing firsthand the devastation of which blasphemies are capable, I discussed the matter with the Admiral, and we were of one mind that the situation warranted our immediate presence. Aye. It is a safe, safe to assume a representative from the Soviet team has already arrived? Indeed, I have. Thank you for coming all this way in such short notice. Recent events here at the camp have proved most enlightening. Exposition. And this is the aforementioned radio. Empire, no more, never again, rises ashes. I'll remind you of the misfortune. Sufficient to push some a wayward few over the edge, it would seem. Yet there still remains a question who is sending this message and from where? Glory everlasting, Garlemald. Oh, glory everlasting for Garlemald. No, it couldn't be. You recognize this message. 
a mantra once spoken by Lord Nerva. Anyone who lived in the provinces under his authority would scarcely forget those words. He sought to claim the throne after the assassination of Emperor Var Aris, does he not? After civil war broke out, he all but disappeared, according to the intelligence we managed to gather. How could he have managed to breach the tower undetected? To have done so and remain unnoticed by the creatures infesting the tower seemed a nigh impossible task, unless... Do you think the voice on the radio is blasphemy? I do. And as it was with Anima, these radios are somehow attuned to whatever signals it emits from the tower. What's, mo what's more, I believe the true identity of the blasphemy is Nerva. Robbed of the throne and forced to watch the empire he loved to crumble to command, long to command, to crumble before his eyes, and such such loss did not drive him to the same fate as Quintus. Quintus. The despair he felt, no doubt, overcame and turned him. Of his delusions of grandeur aside, the godliness plight sounds not unlike the Sahagan. Desperate to to proceed. Desperate to preserve their spawning grounds. Indeed, though unscrupulous by any measure, the Guardians found solidarity in their ideology and did the people of Ilzbar, Ishgard, as did the people of Ishgard, to the church. Drift, a drift without home and purpose is all too easy for despair to take hold. Would that a remedy were as simple as offering them land as we did the Sahagan. In all... Like I the Garleans would refuse to settle for aught less than what we believe to be their ancestral home of Locus Menos, a claim the Corvasi would readily take arms to denounce. We'd do well not to further fan the flames of animosity twixt them. And perhaps by the very least we could offer them peace of mind, and means to regain some semblance of stability in their lives. To offer them true comfort and stability, Garlemald must be rebuilt. By no means an easy solution, but perhaps the only, the one only worthy of pursuit. Of course, this new Garlemald must remain a sovereign nation, free from the oversight of others. Aye, there would see no meaning in it otherwise. If I'm not mistaken, Alphano and Alize have already made strides in helping the people here regain some normalcy in their day-to-day -day living. More important first step, but it would mean little without proper leadership. Rather than a single individual, perhaps a governing body of sorts would prove more effective. There's a number of former Senate, Senate members along the refugees at Camp Broken Glass, as I recall. With their help creating the framework of new governments is not an impossibility. And let us call the people together and see what they can make of our, our proposal. Final gaze has taken much from you all. I can't but imagine the pain you feel in the face of such a miserable loss. Though the final days have been averted, it affects your linger and a blasphemy has been born through suffering. Decisive action must be taken before further harm is wrought upon you. To overcome such adversity is too great a risk for any one person, but as a people united, there may yet be hope for tomorrow. While it is not our place to decide how you will move forward, we would offer a small measure of guidance. We were told a number of former members of your Senate yet remain among you. You would be amenable to an interim government led by those individuals until such time a Garlemald can be rebuilt? Build Garlemald? Such a thing truly possible? Even if we could cobble together some governing council, they wouldn't make in anything of that pile of ash we dare call Garlemald. There's not, there's not going back to Lucas Minas either. Rack and ruin. Those are our only options. Hmm. 
I realize to rebuild Garlemont is seemingly impossible tact, but you need an undertake it alone. My children are working with numbers of the First Legion as we speak to begin an organized relief effort. There are others from the provinces no doubt willing to lend their expertise. You need but ask, not as would-be conquerors, but as brothers and sisters of this star, and others will heed your call. If you should still see no merit in the rebuilding of Garlemont, then I would instead offer you residency in Charlene. I promise you will be welcomed with open arms. Charlene. So now you expect us to go and lick boots in some country we never even heard of? My apologies if I appear overly forward in my proposition, considering your strict policies are strict policies of Don and Fetcher until but recently, it's not surprising that you'd be unfamiliar with my homeland. It's an island nation in the north, home to myriad people, which is why I believe it would not prove difficult to accommodate you and yours. To be clear, we will not be migrating to Chicago to live in servitude. We have my word that each and every one of you would be guaranteed citizenship upon entry. And why exactly would we go to such lengths for us? For the conquerors you barely know. Charlene is long aware of the coming doom that would be the final days. So we are preparing to we were preparing to evacuate the star. Taking as many people and resources as our stores would allow. Initially it was our intent to save the people of Garlemald as well, but we had not forgotten your transgressions invading Alamigo. The rejection of your our entreats for for peace. After a great deal of deliberation, it was decided we would forego an invitation to Garlemald, a determination made with great trepidation. We had convinced ourselves of this it was ultimately for the greater good, though I can think of at least one individual who would continue to protest. To ignore the plight of those who those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, it is indolence. Sage counsel, I brazenly cast aside when confronted with the final days in earnest. But Amagos here and his companions refuse to forsake those who are otherwise unwilling, otherwise un we were un otherwise unwilling to save. With great risk to themselves, they achieved the impossible and opened my eyes to the error of the forum's decision. If all other roads lead to ruin regardless, perhaps we could at least consider it. Then it would be my pleasure to invite you all to Camp Broken Glass, where you shall have warm food and beds both. Adam Merwib and I shall speak with Maxim and the others and consider how best to assist the Godlings moving forward. If we broach the subject of the blasphemy, however, we will not hesitate to call upon you. Those boots look familiar. All right, I'm going to pause here quickly. I just need to do a quick little thing. Get back like in a few shakes of the dogs.
All right. Oh, wrong screen. Here we go. The Garleans hot hard said ease the likelihood of others turning are greatly diminished and that said that said it is no cause for us to grow complacent we must needs find a way to overcome the blasphemy's protective warding if i understand correctly blasphemy's behavior is oftentimes influenced by the memories and emotions of their originator in which, ca which case it would be prudent to learn more of the man who birthed this monstrosity how fortuitous, then, that a number of soldiers from the 3rd Legion are in our custody. For mercy, their tempering was not, not so severe to be beyond our ability to heal them. They are presently being treated at Camp Broken Glass. Perhaps the camp's intelligence officer can tell us who among them knows Ra of Nerva's whereabouts. Quick telehop. I see. Perhaps it is best if you speak with Virgilia, the Gatus of the Third Legion. She is still in the men, but the Kyrugians already like to oppose, aren't like to impose a brief conversation. If you would wait here for here a moment. The Aussie's champion, I presume, one of his cohorts. What business have you with me? Ilzabad is faced with imminent crisis, and we believe the knowledge you bear may be key to stopping it. Exposition. Thus do we believe the blasphemy to be Nerva, whose whereabouts in the wake of Garlemald's fall or lack thereof gave credence to our theory. Lord Nerva? From what we have pieced together thus far, we are one, you are one of the last to see him alive. Please, will you not share us what you know? Very well. But I suspect what meager knowledge I possess shall avail you not. I last spoke with Nerva shortly after the warring with the la the first legion began. Both still within the lower levels of the Seneculan Imperatus. He spent the better part of the day listening attentively to the radio. He seemed hopeful or perhaps desperate for news that the tide might turn in our favor. The next day I left for the front line. It was there I heard a terrible noise, which I assumed came from the Tower of Avil. The darkness took me, and I remember not about it. I was told the radios protect those cl close to them from the effects of the tower, in which case Lord Nerva would have remained unaffected. But he has never been, been devoted to... He has ever been devoted to Garlemald, for glory everlasting, he would say. And to watch the empire he loved so dearly crumble, I can think of no one who would be more stricken by the sight. It would seem me of right to assume what became of Lord Nerva. And it does not surprise me the beast would choose to make its nest within the Tower of Babel. 
It stands atop the remains of the Imperial Palace and the throne he revered so highly. But the Empire is no more, and Lord Nerva apparently is no longer the man he once was. He deserves to be laid to rest, together with his dreams of glory. You will fell the beast, you have my word. Apologies for the interruption. Connie Senna has arrived and we were, we're ready to depart. It's good to see you, Amigos, Master Fortuno. I've spoken with Lorenz of the Ward protecting the Blasphemy and I'm quite confident some manner of ether based magic bars our path. If I may be so bold, though, this seats here, you reach the same conclusion initially, but that simply is not possible. These creatures born of the final days was devoid of ether. As such, they would be unable to produce such a barrier in a manner of which is custom. Do you suppose it's possible they manipulated dynamis to achieve a similar effect? I too thought to dismiss the notion of a barrier fueled by ether. That is, until I stepped foot in Garlemald. Even now I can sense streams of ether flowing towards the tower. Its purpose was, after all, to harvest the reserves of energy sufficient to reach the moon. Even if one was incapable of manipulating ether directly, it stands no reason to stands to reason control of the tower would alleviate such need. It is merely conjecture, of course. I cannot say for certain until I have examined the content the currents with my own eyes. Might I ask you to accompany us? I would join you as well, if I may. My injuries would keep me from being of use in battle, but my knowledge of the land would serve just as well as my blade. I would not be opposed to your company, but it's not my decision to make. You may go, so long as she remains under watch by you and the others. Very good. Might I suggest we begin with Reggio Urbani... Urban... Simin, Sima, Urban Misa, Sima, Urban Sima, Urbanis Sima. Here we go. Where's your Urbanis Sima? Urbanis, Urbanis Sima. No. I sense the greatest confluence of ether in that vicinity. Here's those boots again. As I thought, the ether stream here flows towards the tower, as do all the others in this region, no doubt. This convergence first began when the Telophoroi uh, erected spires in all corners of Eorzea to fuel the Tower of Babel. But once destroyed, this divergence of ether sh should have ceased. All right, whoever you are, if you've be business with us, quit your skulking about in the shadows and speak your peace. It was you in the tower, wasn't it? Hmm. 
Mountain pie. You're sharper than you look. Of course, it's in your room. I recognize you, Nero, yes? Why are you following us? Who said I'm following you? Being a native of Garlemald, does it not stand to reason I might be inclined to come and see what has become of my home? I know not what you're scheming, but you no know time to entertain your games. Perhaps Master Garland would better accompany would make better company for you. Spare me. I'm a man of great ambition and greater intellect. Far beyond the scope of anything Garland would you hope to achieve. He still keeps his head in the clouds while I still set my sights to the stars beyond. Which is why you snuck in the town, and like us, you could have couldn't get past the blasphemy past the blasphemy to reach the transport. Yes, well, I'm very much hoping you may dispense with the little obstacle. I mean, caught wind of your plans, curiosity compelled me to see if you were truly up to the task. You have reason to believe you are not, or perhaps does the great genius Nero mean to dispense with the blasphemy himself? Albeit for me to steal your glory, having come all this way. But as I am feeling generous, I will tell you what I've learned during my time in the Tower of Babel. I was able to access its systems, you see, and discovered one of those dreadful spires still appears to be active. Possible. They all vanished when Anima was destroyed. Yes, and I heard of your escapades reclaiming the remains of the Emperor. And obviously, you failed to reclaim his entire body. As it stands, a piece remains powering a tower at Fabrica. Uh, yes, the manufacturing district just north of the erstwhile Imperial Palace. Rather impressive feat, considering how these lands were so utterly devoid of ether. Barely enough to sustain life, let alone inspire. But if one were to use Varus' remains to forcibly create a confidence of sorts. Nicely, from what I've gleaned, the tower's system, systems, this heart serves as its core. Coursing not with blood, but it's your precious ether. And now Nerva has amassed a surfeit to shore up his defenses. How fortuitous he would he would find so perfect an impetus of his design, stolen from better minds than his own. How very like him. Oh, did I say that out loud? You'll forgive me if I fail to show concern for your ire. What you say is true. These lands could never hope to recover from such a placity of life energies. Falsity of life energies. We must hurry and find Varus' Varys, heart to both spare the land this wanton harvest and deny the blasphemy the source of its protection. Are we to presume you have, have it in attention, any intention of aiding us? As I said, I have no intention of stealing your glory, though I feel victory may soon slip through your fingers if you do not act quickly. Tower of Babel is designed specifically for Anima to serve as its core. Never forcing himself on the system has caused it to grow increasingly unstable. If my calculations are correct, and they always are, it will not be long before the, his presence triggers a system meltdown. The entire the resulting explosion will destroy whatever tenuous streams of ether breathe life into the lands of Garlemald. More importantly, we will lose our only means of reaching the moon, the heavens forever denied by genius. How so very unfortunate. In any event, it would seem time, time is of the essence. That's all well and good, but even if we know which district to search, finding the heart will be like looking for a needle in a bloody haystack. Actually, I may know where we, we can start. It's all rather hazy, but I still have this vague recollection of my time serving Anima when it was enthralled. We were commanded to erect some manner of facility tucked away in a corner of Fabrica. I remember not what it was for, but it was good of a place as any to begin our search. Certainly sounds promising, but surely this facility would be heavily guarded.
Maybe it'd be best to divide our forces. It's just the four of us. Shouldn't prove too difficult to sneak inside and find the heart. Meanwhile, our main force can stand ready to storm the Tower of Babel when the barrier gives out. Safe. This is Levier. What? Very well, we shall return at once. Member of Godliness has left camp for the Tower of Babel. They have somehow misunderstood the threat of the tower and convinced themselves that Nova has taken refuge there, still clinging to their ill-placed patriotism, no doubt. They could not have gone far. If we act quickly, perhaps we can be found before they come to harm. The wise man would not waste his time on wayward refugees. I thought you Charlian scholars knew that. I, to ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom, sir. If it is all the same to you, Emigos, I would join you. I will return to camp and begin preparations for our assault on the tower. I suppose I should go as well. Yeah. Zero for you. So I'm unarmed. I pro promise not to be a burden. That said, it would behoove us to avoid any undue confrontations if possible. Now then, let us be off. All right. Around behind this automated death machine. Oh, turning around. Go over here. Way from the automated death machine. We're really weird at calling their machines, things like that. No trace of them here. Let's keep searching. Okay, automated bit. Don't turn around. Oh. You stay over there, Automated co Colossus. Help! Come on, please! Did you hear that? It came from over there. Okay, he's no longer following me, so I can fly. You, you're the ones who came to speak with us before. We heard Lord Nerva's return and was assembling his forces in the tower, but... Uh... No, well... Not exactly. No, not Lord Nerva too. Then this really is nothing left for us. I will not deny your situation is dire, but you are not without a path forward. Believe in your passion and conviction needed to rebuild Gollumald, if you so choose. But in that, you could begin a life anew in Charlian. 
Bill got them all. No, there's no point in entertaining so lofty a dream. We would sooner die than suffer life under the rule of another. You would, you would sooner seek death than sanctuary? Your resolve is admirable, but surely misplaced. You might not see Gollumwald rise from the snow and ashes in Ilspawn. Might you consider adventuring into New Frontier? New Frontier? Where exactly is there this land ripe for exploration? There. On the moon. It is our goal to create a repository of man's knowledge there, free from the jurisdiction of any nation. As I understand it, the Magitech and technological advancements of Gollumwald were without peer. Your expertise would be indispensable in the endeavor. Should you be willing, of course. You really expect us to go and live on the bloody moon? Is such a thing of impossible? Have you a better alternative? Lest you forget, Gollumwald did not rise to grandeur from complacency in the in the present or rumination in the past. We live for the future. It is our blood. Life is not without its hardships, of course. Even I have met with the occasional stumbling block, but even should I stumble, my eyes are forever fixed skyward, seeking ever greater heights. The Empire may be lost, but I still possess a great deal of knowledge gained from it, and a desire to seek more. The very notion of exploring the moon is an unprecedented prospect, and you would balk at them. And you would balk the pr proposition boggles the mind. Consider this. You have heard that beasts of the final days were born from hapless souls. I have given up on everything, yes? That is indeed your case. Can you tell me why you still stand before me? Perhaps deep down you believe your life is yet worth living. Deep down you long to reach for the unreachable. Or perhaps you don't. If you choose to lay down and die in the snow, then that's not my concern. Reach for the unreachable. That sounds like something I would have sa said back at the academy. All right, we'll go. I suppose it's better than dying here in the snow, as you so grimly put it. Then we must first dispense with the blasphemy that commands the tower. It's hard to believe Lord Nerva of all people could be turned into one of those monsters. Please, you must stop him. Put his soul to rest. Thank you. I'm sorry for causing all this trouble. Thank you for the rousing call of action, but I thought you had no interest in meddling in our affairs. As you misunderstand, I abhor the idea of my countrymen blindly following nobles they no know not next to nothing about. Besides, it would be the most piteous sight for not a single garlean to be among those venturing to the moon. Who else am I to prevail upon to learn of new findings up there? Yeah, he has a heart. Despite. Everything he's saying. Grab some skill screen material. Alright, running out of slots in my inventory. Fortunately, I was eager to regroup and make ready for battle. For what Nero has told us, time is now a luxury we can ill afford. Let us return to Camp Broken Glass, if only for the for the moment. The others are no doubt fishing their preparations for battle. Hellhop. Uh. I should hope the other's absence means all Proceeds apace. pace. 
Good. You're here. With the recent arrival of reinforcements, our preparations are all but complete. Apologies for our lateness. It seems we are at least in time to help deliver the crushing blow. Aye, even if the fates are... And if the fates are kind, this will be the last we see of those damnable blasphemies. Commander, Commander Aldin, Lord Hien. Thank, thank you both for coming. Yes, yes, of course, understood. Lorenz and the others have reclaimed Varus's heart. The barrier protecting the blasphemy should soon dissipate. Then the time has come at last to storm the Tower of Babel. Abel Mirawib and Lord Emmerich await our arrival at its base. Then we should be about it, eh? I suppose it's a good opportunity as well to keep my hammer from rusting over. I'll accompany you as well. As the foreman's representative and member of the survey team, I feel it my responsibility to see this through to the end. And take you for the fighting type. Despite appearances, I'm no stranger to the battlefield. Indeed, I have seen my fair share of traveling the world in the service of the forum. Though I may not be the equal of Alphano or Alize, we shall not find ourselves wanting. I can promise you that much. Does he go, hey, Alphano, can, can I uh, uh, borrow my old uh, 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 noodles? <laughs> you have finished your preparations. We shall reconvene at the end. Encelidium, where that thing is. Because remember, Alphano got uh, his dad's sage noodless. Oh, on here. And time for the duty. Well, our president accounted for. Shall we proceed? There are checkpoints in this duty. Our objective is simple. Locate and eliminate the blasphemy Nerva. Though the barrier guarding him is no more, a number of beasts will surely block the way at the auxiliary sector. Off to a smashing start, I see. It would seem the tower has reached its limit sooner than I anticipated. If we are to save the transport, we must hurry and find Nerva now. go without saying but standing to God there was quite the menagerie of horrors when last I was here.
Oof. DPS check. That's the last of them. Of course not. We can't afford to impede our events any further. Commander Eldin, let us hold them off here. Now it's for Fortuno. Take the others and go. Quickly! Understood. Samurai and the one-armed gladiator. Come up to Anima's chamber and there's Nerva. Oh. Hey. This creature looks familiar. Now. Fine.
There we go. Glory everlasting indeed. Is it over? Is the danger past? By a hair's breadth, perhaps, but yes. I'd say we managed to avoid a fiery ruin. Our path through the moon is open once more. The duty of traveling has ever been to chart the course of history, not to change it. Thus did we fervently hold to our policies of neutrality and non-intervention. In truth, it was all in service of our plans of exodus. We abandoned the star to its ruinous fate. Harsh though it may sound, I still believe it was ultimately for the greater good. Uh, no, that's fair. That's fair. It is a backup plan. Always good to have a plan B. Thank you. Thanks to you and your comrades, however, it is a fate that did not come to pass. Charlene will now find a new way forward, not merely for the preservation of knowledge, but for the betterment of this star and all who call it home. I believe I speak for all of the Forum when I say it will be an honor and a privilege to work towards such a goal alongside the Allied Nations. Aye, an age of true and everlasting peace is finally within our grasp. We will seize it together. It is a relief to know we are no longer in need of battle. Despite our experience, I must confess I am ill suited for it. The Allied Nation leaders, meanwhile, demonstrate an aptitude for combat far and above what I might expect from diplomatic leaders. And you, my friend, I see now why you are so well regarded as a Eorzea's champion. The others have already begun the arduous journey home, but before you go, I would offer a word of thanks to the both of you. Not for your timely assistance, your plans would be forfeit, and the lands of Ilsbad forever defiled by the blasphemy. Please, I have no need for your platitudes. I labor only to further my own ends, nothing more. We heard the news. Thank, f thank you for everything. With Lord Nerva laid to rest, we have peace of mind to move on without regret. Ah, oh, there you are. Now, what's this I've heard about you cleaning out the Tower of Babel? Are you finally ready to return to the moon? But for the tuitous timing, allow me to introduce you to Living Way of the Lopperts, moon dweller and overseer of the survey team. Living Way, these good people will be the moon's first residents. I trust you and the other Lopperts will take good care of them. Please to meet you. Residence? Oh, no. Uh, I mean, oh, yes! Splendid! After many, many long years of planning and preparation, the moon is absolutely, most definitely ready to accommodate your stay. <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't we have to clean up the big cheese? Glad to hear it. Apologies for the delay. I must first confer with Lorenz and see to our final preparations, but your residence-to-be and the survey team shall be a long ere long. Might I trouble you to relay a word of our success to Shurabat in the Radzat Town? I should think the tidings are the most heartening coming from you. Until next we meet.
Oh, wait, wait, you're not leaving for the moon without me. I mean, one thing they should probably do is uh, they should do some renovations on that Tower of Babel. I mean, if they want to continue calling it Tower of Babel and then, like, just uh, uh, maybe just make it look prettier. Uh, might be a good, like, this is like the moon base. And this is where you teleport to the moon and maybe facilities and something like that. I don't know. Garlemald should, should rebuild it, you know. Reclaiming their land. I was going to say reclaiming their time, but I'm, I'm not sure if that uh, meme has already worked itself out. There's a lot of work, and I'm sure there's a lot of nations that, or people that would like to help out. Yeah, nice endeavor. It's true then, the blasphemy and gall and mothers be struck down. They were right to call upon you, it seems. It's with no other no other outstanding reports of blasphemy sightings, I dare say you slain the last of them. Perhaps now you can finally put, start to put the final days behind us. Strange that it may sound. On behalf of my fellow delegates and the radiant host, I extend to you our humblest thanks. Hope for that when next I call upon you, it will be under more fortuitous circumstances. Ugh. I have a whole bunch of stuff in my bags. I really need to like sort things out. One of these days. Get more food. Alright, that's it. That's that's all I was doing for this. That's it. Thank you for joining me. Till next time.